And, uh, oh, now I can hear myself. I don't always like that, but, uh, but nice, to, nice to have you here. Uh, I want to mention that we do have welcome cards in the pew. They kind of look like this. And if you have a minute, you'd like to uh, fill them out and uh, put them in the offering plate at the end. There's also a nice room for prayer concerns in there. I want to mention, uh, please pray for Mary Wells, who slipped and fell on the ice and is recovering, uh, broke some bones in her wrist and dislocated her arm. And but good to have her here, and she'll be traveling for a couple of weeks here, and so we wish her good travels. And then Pam, Pam Phillips' son-in-law slipped and fell on the ice and tore up a knee, right? Okay. Anybody else fall and slip on the ice? Oh, yeah, Bill. Bill Carper slipped and fell on the ice. I took him to Fargo here on Friday and back and had rotator cuff surgery, and, and so pray for Bill and for uh, Frank and for Mary. Anybody else? Okay, that's enough slipping and falling on the ice for now. I <laughs> um, want to mention that Pastor Joel Winkler from St. Paul's United Methodist Church has a medical uh, deal going on in his life. He's in the hospital in Fargo. It's treatable. I'm not so sure uh, we need to be mentioning it over YouTube, but um, Pastor Michelle is going to be helping them out on Christmas Eve. So please come uh, tomorrow night, Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock. We'll miss your presence. Wish you have a great Christmas, but she'll be filling in for me. My wife and I were looking for a place to go to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary. And uh, she wanted to go to Hawaii. And then we looked at how much it cost. And we decided not to go to Hawaii. <laughs> we decided just to travel south until we hit warm weather. Then we'll stop for a while and come back in a couple of weeks. 
And so I want to thank Pastor Michelle for uh, helping. We should be back about the 10th or so of, of uh, whatever that next month is. I almost said July, but it's, I think it's, I think it's uh, January. And, uh, and anyhow, uh, we uh, thank you for all that you've done and all you continue to do here. Uh, Christmas Eve program is a very special time. Uh, Meredith and Brittany will be uh, honoring us with their gifts in a, a very special number. And uh, Sharon Kane and Jamie Crane Buell is going to be uh, playing a number and singing. Um, Sharon's going to be doing the singing. And then also Heather Awning is going to be uh, sharing her musical gifts with us as well. So it should be a very, very special time, uh, Christmas Eve service tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Please invite someone, and uh, thank you for being here today. I'm going to invite Pastor Michelle to share a few more words. Well, you know it's Christmas when uh, Meredith and Brittany are playing a duet, because <laughs> it's always so awesome. But there are no other announcements, really, other than to say that the office will close tomorrow at noon. And so if there's anything you need before noon, please let us know. Um, and then the office will close and service at 5 o'clock. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, we will turn to the choir for our morning introit. Let's pray. Holy God, as we come this morning, we come to worship you. We come adoring you. We come as Advent is about to end and the time of preparation is drawing to a close. We come prepared and ready to welcome you into our hearts once again on Christmas. Amen. And now let's please rise and turn to hymn number 220, which will also appear on the screen.
and turn around and greet those around you and welcome them to worship. And now please be seated as the choir brings us our morning anthem.
hard to follow. <laughs> but uh, please turn to hymn number 211 and remain seated as we sing this song to bring us into a place of prayer. Thank you for your wonderful message and song. Let's join our hearts together in a silent prayer followed by a pastoral prayer and then let's share together the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God and Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful opportunity we have to come to you and to approach your amazing throne of grace. We long to honor you and glorify you, to worship you and to praise you for all that you are, an all-powerful, all-knowing God, a God who is always present, even in the midst of the most difficult times of life, you are there. Thank you for this very special time of the year where we can celebrate the coming of the Christ child. And thank you for the privilege we have of knowing not only who he is, but experiencing his power. We thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we worship together, as we pray, as we 
study the pages of Holy Scripture as we fellowship together and as we take this message of good news out into the world. We think that we can be a sign and a light of hope and a message of comfort and uh, be able to share the joy of this message so people in the world can have this great experience called peace. We thank you for the privilege we have of not only worshiping today, but inviting lots of folks to come at 5 o'clock tomorrow night to, to this candlelight service and to enjoy this amazing experience. Thank you for the opportunity we have to remember folks who've gone through difficult times. You think of Art and Roxanne Mitzel and their family and others who have recently lost loved ones. We think of folks who have medical needs. We're grateful for a successful surgery for Bill Carper on Friday. We uh, look for healing for Mary Wells and Pam Phillips' son-in-law, Frank. Remember Pastor Joel Winkler and uh, trust that he continues to heal well and will be feeling better soon. We thank you for other folks mentioned in the bulletin. We remember Doris and Lori, Bev and Kevin, uh, Jean and Al and Sherry, for uh, Bill and Lynn and Bonnie and Russell and Vicki, for Rick and Pastor Raina and our sister church in Nicaragua. We pray for the Nicaragua trip, the early part of January, and all the folks who are going. We're grateful for Paul and Mickey who are here today and all the work that they do down there. And we think of so many who are traveling, and so we ask that your hand of grace and ha hand of safety be placed upon folks who are traveling in, in any, any way. Thank you for military personnel, and especially those who are a long way away from their family. We remember political leaders and spiritual leaders, and especially uh, folks that are in a spiritual leadership during this time of the year. Their schedules are very, very full. The demands, on, the demands on their time and energy are huge, and so we ask your hand of blessing upon them. And now we share together this wonderful prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite the ushers to please come as we joyfully advance God's kingdom in our giving. If you're ever wanting an idea of how our income is in relationship to our budget, there's always a little uh, item of information on usually the back side of the bulletin.
Gracious God, we thank you for the joy of giving. It's our hope and prayer that more people would experience the joy of knowing you. We ask your hand of blessing upon each gift and giver. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, I've entitled uh, the message today, uh, you know, has to do with joy and peace and kind of following some of the themes on the wall that have to do with hope and love, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I thought the message for today, rejoicing every day or rejoice every day, is, is what uh, the message that uh, came to the shepherds was. I want to thank uh, Tyrell and Ken for being upstairs today and uh, also tomorrow night uh, to, uh, for our Christmas Eve service. We're grateful for the, the folks who are helping out there. Um, but you know, um, yesterday, my wife sent me to the store. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning. Let's just say it wasn't the first trip to the store yesterday morning. And uh, I met a guy over here at Hugo's, and we were visiting. And I asked him, I said, so uh, how, many trips, how many trips is this for you to the store? And I probably shouldn't tell you who he was or who he is, but uh, he is the husband to someone who is very well known in the Jamestown area. And uh, he says it was his third trip to the store. And I had mentioned to him, I says, you know, any guy that can go to the store three times by 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, still is smiling is making a huge impact on the world. <laughs> so I asked if it would be OK if we took a little Facebook picture you know, and then I sent it to his wife, and I thanked her and uh, family for all that they did. And we just had a great time of, of uh, creating kind of a light moment. And then I went home, and uh, my wife had this long list of things to do, because we had uh, both of our kids and their kids coming and so on and so forth. And, and uh, you know, it helped me to understand the role of a host a little better. Because from like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, all we did was stand and cook and start making all these dishes and putting all these things together. And, you know, it helped me to appreciate the work that so many people do uh, just by getting ready for a meal. But, you know, we live in a, an amazing country because we have such an abundance of food. We have such an abundance of resources we have an amazing lifestyle that we can enjoy. And, and I know that it gets a little bit cool up here. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that has also impressed me this year is the farmers. The farmers with uh, extra cold, extra snow, and timely rains, and the harvest season. And they somehow find a way uh, to take the highway. And, um, and, you know, in this particular story here, and, and of course our thoughts and prayers uh, go for farmers who still have quite a bit of crop out on the field. But, but anyhow, uh, shepherds in uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 8, uh, all the way to verse 20 here, receive a message of rejoicing, a message of good news. And uh, we're going to find here that there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Notice now, now shepherds were among the lowest people in their day. They were like the homeless people. They were like people who couldn't keep a strong job, a strong paying job. They were considered in the culture in that day the outcasts. Now, shepherds today around here, I was visiting, uh, in fact, I went down a couple of weeks ago to visit with my brother and took him his Christmas present and went to the mall to, to check on a few things down there, and I ran into a cousin. Haven't seen them for quite a few years, and and um, I asked my uh, cousin what they do, and she says she helps her husband. I said, so what does he do? They have 400 head of sheep. And then they told me about all the barns. They have like four different barns they put them in. And this is the time of year that they're already starting to lamb. And I'm thinking, bless you, you can have it. But you know, shepherds, were boondockers. If you like camping and you know what boondocking is, it means that you're parking a camper someplace without any electricity, without any water hookups, and you're having to kind of fend for yourself. Well, this was camping and, tent and tenting before 
boondocking became popular. Isn't it interesting that it was shepherds that were selected by God were among the first people to receive good news. They were out in the field in the open sky. They were watching over their flocks by night. Verse 9 says, and, and then the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Well, there's a couple of things we like to look at here. Is um, that God continues to send angels in the Bible with a very, very special message. Okay? And uh, you never know at different times when you talk to different people who, who really uh, are serious about walking with the Lord, that every once in a while they receive a special message from God. Now, it may not always be to the work of an angel, because ever since the God, the Holy Spirit, has come, the day of Pentecost, oftentimes God prompts our heart with a message, and then we can move forward like that. But the glory of the Lord shone around them. I tried to imagine what that looked like, and the only thing I can figure is that it was a little bit maybe like a thunderstorm. If you've ever been in a lightning storm or a thunderstorm, and the glory of the Lord, this bright light in the midst of this darkness out in the field shone around them. And notice their immediate response is to be afraid, was to be terrified. And then verse 10 goes on to say, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Notice that the, the news was good. Uh, I still hesitate in turning on the 6 o'clock news or 10 o'clock news. In fact, most of the time, I tape it. And, and then I go back, and then I play, and I listen to only the parts I want to see or hear. Because you know, that way you can play through a half an hour of news in like 10 minutes, and you can kind of pick and choose. And uh, I think there's really too much negative news still today, but the news that God has given us is good news. He's given us the news that gives us hope, uh, communicates God's love, brings us God's joy, and also God's peace. And notice that it's a joy not just for some people, but it's a joy for all people. Verse 11 then goes on to say that, that here's the message. Today in the, the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah and the Lord. He is the anointed one by God. He is the one who has been sent to live and to die for the sins of the world. Verse 12 goes on to say, and this will be a sign you will find a baby wrapped in clothes or claws lying in a manger. Back in those days, it was cultural, correct, to take a baby like we have here today, different places, wrap them around with different strips of clothes, and then place them in a manger. Isn't it interesting that uh, there's a number of reasons of why Jesus was born in a manger. Number one, it was prophesied about 700 years before the prophet Isaiah talks about it and other prophets talked about it. But uh, these shepherds would not have been invited to a lot of people's homes because they were outcasts. But they would be invited to a manger. Verse 13 goes on to say, and, and then suddenly there was a great company of heavenly hosts appearing with the angel, praising God and saying, and sometimes people ask the question, okay, now, how many angels were there? Years gone by and other churches I've had the joy of serving, they used to have at this time of the year uh, a living nativity. They'd hire camels and they'd hire donkey and they'd hire animals for the manger and, uh, and then they would have a bunch of people, you know, play the role of this heavenly host of angels. Now, usually when we had, we got as many people as we could to do that, it was kind of like the choir here that did a great job again today, uh, but they would sing out loud a, a message of celebration. Well, when we look at the book of Revelation, it talks in there about the heavenly host celebrating, and it talks specifically about thousands times thousands and 10,000 times 10,000s. It was probably a huge, number of angels and you know they were doing what angels do and they were doing what you and i will do when we enter the presence of god in eternity we are praising god and we are glorifying god glory to god in the highest heaven and on earth peace 
and it talks about how God's favor is going to come and rest. I love to hear other people pray. Every once in a while, I hear them talk in their prayer and share the message of bringing glory to God. But you know, that is something that we never want to lose sight of in our culture because we live in such a fast-moving world in a pace that's unbelievably strong. And then to be able to stop and realize, you know, what it's all about is to bring glory to God. It's why we do what we do. It's why we live the way we live. It's why we take time for people. It's why we gather in churches to, to use music to honor him and to glorify him and to praise him. And of course, the message is that this message would go to the highest heavens. In the culture in that day, they had different levels of heavens. Some, uh, some literature talks about five levels of heaven. Some literature talks about seven levels of heaven. The Apostle Paul says that in a prayer, in a trance, he was taken to the highest heaven. And these messages from this angel, or this message, says that glory to God in the highest heaven is where God lives. And it's a message of peace. And it's a message that talks about God's favor resting on his people. You know, and I think it's really important to be open to God's blessing. I think it's really important to be open to God's favor. Sometimes as we go through life, we run across times where we're disappointed about something or we, uh, we have missed expectations about something. And it's pretty easy to say, okay, God, I don't understand why this happened. You know, and especially when it comes to technology. Technology is wild. We were visiting the other night. About a month ago, we had uh, Christian music playing through our speakers. Do you remember that? And we had turned off the soundboard. We had turned off this and turned off that and done everything we know to do to keep that wonderful music from playing during the same time we wanted to do our thing here in worship. But, you know, technology is amazing. And, uh, and I always like to support technology because it brings us so much good. But sometimes there are times when technology can stress our life. And we want to remember that we, the key is to come back to God's blessing and to come back to God's favor. Verse 15 then. And then uh, the angels had left them and gone into heaven and the shepherd said, let's go home and watch TV. Oh, no, that wasn't it. Let's, let's go play a video game. No, let's go watch the Hallmarks channel on television. You know, you know in our culture, if angels would come to us, we'd be tempted to do different things. Oh, I have this meal to fix. I have guests coming for Christmas, right? Or, uh, oh, how about the sheep? Who's going to watch my sheep? You notice what they said? Let's go see. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And then they hurried off. And the Greek word hurried off means to pick it up and put it down and really meet, uh, move forward. And then this is what they found. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. You know, and I think in our fast-paced world, uh, at least one time a year, or maybe more frequently than that, it, it, it does us good to think about what that is like. Every living nativity I've ever walked through in life in a lot of different states one of my favorite places beyond the animals and beyond the angels is to stop at the manger. And every once in a while in a living nativity, they have a live baby. And the arms are moving and the legs are moving and they're making the sounds that babies make. And it makes the whole experience come alive. Well, it's very, very special, very, very amazing. Every time uh, these days when I have the opportunity of, of encouraging a family, when a baby's born in a hospital, I always take time to look at the fingers, and I always take time to look at those little toes, and it reminds me 
of an amazing God who creates babies the way he does. Well, it was the Christ child, a very special baby. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. Notice, God picked the lowest folks in a culture. He picked the outcast, and he gave them a message of hope that changed their lives. We ask ourselves the question, when we think about people that we're wanting to encourage as individuals, or when we think about people we want to reach as a church, who do we focus on? Who do we invest our time in? Who do we invest our, our resources in? Well, there's a lot of different options out there. But you know who Jesus spent quality time with? It was the poor. And the angels and God picked the poor and the outcast, the unpopular, to receive good news. Verse 18 then says, and, and, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said. Can't hardly believe it. Verse 19 goes, says, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. We've talked about this before. And frequently when I visit with someone at a ball game or at a grocery store and we're taking a selfie for Facebook and we're looking at the quality of a picture and then I try to add this little message when life is over, all we have left is our family, our friends, our faith, and our memories. That's all that's left. And hopefully, in the midst of these memories, will be lots of times where we have honored God and walked with God and glorified God and rejoiced in who he is and just praised and thanked him. My brother came home from college one time, went to Ellendale for a year, played football there, and then went on to Sioux Falls College when I was over at Christian school and went there. and. My dad asked him to pray. He was about halfway through college. And we had this prayer we, we always said. And uh, it wasn't the come Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah, that was the one. There's one about going to sleep, too. It wasn't that one. But, um, but instead of saying the regular prayer that we always said, he said two words. Thank you, Lord. And I've never forgotten that. And what people remember is not the number of words that we use in a conversation. But sometimes it's the few words that we use that come from the heart. And Mary had a way of treasuring all these things in her heart. Verse 20, it says, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And the application for this verse is, is that when God comes to us and prompts our heart and gives us a message, we can be assured that somehow, some way, he will be faithful. He will provide. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we can worship together and, and walk together. And we thank you for the, the many reasons we have to rejoice and to give thanks. And we thank you for the many times that you continue to bring your people through challenging times. And we, uh, we look forward to the future. We look forward to finishing this year strong. 
And we look forward to doing all we can to honoring you and glorifying you and continuing to rejoice in your favor, your blessings, each and every day. That's our hope, and that's our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Great closing song we want to sing entitled, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Let's stand together, page 251. Pretty upbeat song, so sing out. God, we, we thank you for a message of hope and a message of good news. And help us to uh, be open to taking time to visit with someone, perhaps even someone we've never met, and strike up a conversation and give them a reason to rejoice. Grant us now your blessing and benediction. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray.